I'm Pastor Dexter Bain. You are viewing the Living Hope Ministry. This program is designed to bring hope to the hopeless in Jesus' precious name. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Pleasant good day again. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and soon coming King. Extremely happy to share with you again from the Word of God. Share the gospel message of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are looking today in Romans chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. Romans chapter 4, verse 23 to 24 reads, Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, eternal God and heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for life today. We thank you, God, for the privilege and the opportunity whereby we can stand here and even in this place to declare the gospel message, to declare your word, to speak your truth, God, to the listeners. In the name of Jesus, I commit myself and what I have to say today in your hands, asking God that your Holy Spirit will take it and cause it to take root in the hearts of the hearers and the listeners and cause it to a big transformation and, and open up the understanding, O oh God. I just commit everything into your hands in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God is good, extremely good. The more we look at the word of God, the more we see the goodness of God being revealed to us. And the more we, we pay close attention to the word, the more we see where we are lacking. Amen. And it is important for us to stay connected. I want to make that point. It is very important for us to stay connected because once we are not connected to God, we are in trouble. We'll find ourselves in trouble. So staying connected is very, very important. And we stay connected through the word and prayer. Amen. So I want to speak to us today on the topic, credited in full. Credited in full. And I, I use the term credited in full because see, for a lot of people, we think for us to come. In fact, recently I was speaking to someone and they were giving me the impression that they have some issues to fix, some things to deal with before they could surrender their all to God. So some people think that they have to fix their problems, fix their situation, deal with their issues before they surrender to God because there are some issues to deal with. I want to tell you, every one of us, once you are born into this world, you have born with issues and you have you were never in a place that you please God in totality and he decide, okay, I will make you a child of mine. So therefore, we must come to God just as we are because he said, he is the one that will fix our problems. He said, come just as you are. And I want to tell you that don't try to fix your problem. Don't try to get it all right before you turn to the Lord. You see, righteousness is not something to be earned, but it's something we receive, a gift of grace credited to us by God in response to our faith. Hallelujah. Righteousness. Many people think they have to get it right before they come to God. But righteousness is something we received. It's a gift of grace credited to us when we come to God by faith. When we respond to God. When we respond to the provision that God has made. Through faith, we receive the gift of righteousness. Hallelujah. The word credited is one we often use in reference to finances. And if we use that term or that analogy, it may be a bit easier for us to understand the whole plan of redemption. 
or justification. Amen. Our bank statements, there are two columns, one for credit and one for debit. If you are familiar with the bank, with banking, there are two columns, one for credit, one for debit, debit in our statement. Right? Hallelujah. The debit column is money we pay out. And the credit column is for money paid in. Now think about your life. Think about what Christ has done for us. Think about the person or the people we were before we, we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will understand the contrast that I'm making here. Because we cannot get it right without Christ. Hallelujah. I always have to plug that in because many people, if you talk to people on a daily basis, you will observe that a lot of people are not coming to the Lord because they, they have some things to fix. They have some things to get right. But I want to tell you that God is the one that will fix it. Come just as you are to the Lord. He is the one that will fix it. So we see in the scriptures, in this passage that we have read, I, I just read two verses to emphasize on, but if you read the entire chapter, the, there is a great focus on Abraham. Right? Abraham is standing before God, and to him, it is all debit. Hallelujah. I am childless with no hair. How can I know I will gain possession of the land? This is what Abraham is asking himself. How can I know I can gain possession of the land? There is nothing physical for, he, for him to see. When he checks his condition, his position, his age, he thinks it is impossible for him to really gain possession of the land that God has showed him. He so said, I am out of resources. And many of us at times we think, hey, I am not in a position to serve God. I, I, I need this, I need that, I need so, I, I am out of resources. I hear, I hear many times people say, I don't have a shoes to go to church. I don't have clothes to go to church. To church. They are out of resources, they think. But if you make that first step, I could remember when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, I didn't have the, the so-called church clothes, what we think is church clothes. I had uh, jeans and, and rough neck clothes, that, as, you, as we see. But the so-called soft shirt and, and soft pants and, and shine shoes, I did not have anything like that. that. Those things we call church clothes. I didn't have those things. But, however, I decided I will go to church. And I went to church with what I had. And the other week I went with something else. And the other week I went with something else. Since I began to wear jacket and, and so on. Why? God make provision. And all of those things I, so people give me, they, they look at me and they, they were passionate people, concerned people, people who see the need and they, they decide they will help me to, to look a certain way, look like a church boy then. Let me put it so, look like a church boy. So I started to wear these soft clothes or these church clothes as we call them and look like people. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so people think they are out of resources. I need this, I had to get a shoes, I have to get this, and I have to get this before I could come to church. They are out of resources. So it is with Abraham. I am childless, I have no hair. How can I gain possession of this land? I am out of cash. It's all debit, debit, debit. That's Abraham's position, and for many of us, that's the state we find ourselves in when the gospel message comes our way. All we can see is debit, debit, debit. I am in, in no position to start to serve God. Let me tell you, that's the exact place that God wants you to show you that he could make it happen. Because the things that are impossible with men are possible with God. It's right there God wants to find you. In the dung heap where you are less than nothing or where people think you are less than nothing. Right there where you are dung and out and you are flat on your back and you are between a rock and a hard place. God will take you out of that and prove to you that he is the God who he said he is. And then if you look at the life of Abraham and, and, and the faith that Abraham exercised in God, we will see the same God that I'm speaking about is the same God that Abraham trusted back then. Hallelujah. To paraphrase again, God says to him, to Abraham, 
Abraham, you don't need any cash in your account. Hallelujah. Can you imagine that? Hearing the voice of God after you showing, saying, oh, hey, I don't have this, I don't have that, all these things you don't have to serve God. And God is saying to you, hey, you don't need none of that. I can take care of you. That is very sobering. That is a lot of hope. Because many people, really and truly, they don't know better. For a lot of people, they don't know better. They think they have to get it, this. They have to get some church clothes. I could remember hearing a story some time ago about a, 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 man, a young man that went to church in a sneakers and a jeans pants and a, and a t-shirt. And the, no, I don't know if it's a joke. I, I, let's take it as a joke, but it could have some truth in it. The, 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 the pastor said to the, the guy, indicate him, I want to see you after church. And he said to him after the service, we, we don't dress like that to come here. We, we, dress, we don't dress like that. You know, so next time, dress better. And the guy went back with the same T-shirt, the same jeans, pants, and the same sneakers the other Sunday. And the pastor spoke to him again and said, I remember I told you last week, we, we don't dress like that. So the guy asked him, the pastor, well, how, how to dress? How should I dress? He asked the Lord how to dress. And the guy went back the third Sunday in the same clothes. And he said, the pastor spoke to him again and said, what happened? You, you, you didn't talk to the Lord? He said, yes, I spoke to the Lord. And what, and what he said, he said, I've never been to that church. <laughs> he said, I've never been to that church. You see, the whole idea, the attitude, and if you're thinking about how you had to dress a particular way to go to this church, then maybe the Lord is not there. That's the point I'm making. God is, God, what God wants is our heart. He's looking to save our very soul and not how we, we, we behave on the outskirts. You know, and, and this, sometimes this is what deter people from coming to, to the Lord. Sometimes the people who, who already know God and, and moving on with him behave a particular way that they turn away those who are on the outskirts looking to come in because they are not in the, in the, the so-called <laughs> um, class that they, they, they portray. And these people think, I, I will not be able to fit in. I can't blend in with these people because... The way they operate and conduct themselves, I, I can't meet up, I cannot match up. So they turn away. And I, I beg of us, those of us that are Christian, let us pat down and, and be humble and, and be concerned and passionate about those on the outskirts looking in. Let us try to, you know, involve them in, in, the, in the ministry, involve them in the work of the Lord. But allow them to feel welcome. I don't know why I'm saying this. This is not part of my message. But let us allow them to feel welcome and, and, and appreciated when they come among us. Right? That is very important for, for the building of the body of Christ and for the souls of men to be saved. Because there's a whole lot of things being said about church today. And if we present Christ... By the very way we live, the things that we are hearing should not be said. Amen. So Abraham, Abraham was a man of faith. He trusted what God had told him. So he said, and you don't have, Jesus, God said to him, and you don't have to pay anything out. You don't have to pay anything because he was concerned about how he going to earn this land. I am going to credit you with this. God said to him, I am going to credit you with this. I am going to pay this because Abraham believed God. He discovered his account was already credited with everything God had promised him. What he discovered, he discovered that his account was credited with everything that God had promised him when he believed God. And that is what we are called to do. Put our belief in the word of God. Let me say this at this junction, that our very life, everything we do, we use words and we act upon words. We communicate with words. We move and we eat we, we, everything we do, we use words. And the scripture is a word of God that he used, that is written to communicate with us. Somehow, we fail 
to apply the word of God to our very life. We fail to apply the word of God to our daily life and we fail to see the hand of God in action. All the time, because we are not putting our trust, we are not believing, we do not believe in totality in the word of God. And that is what God is looking for. That is what Abraham did. Abraham believed God and he was credited Hallelujah. For it he was justified for it. He was declared righteous because he put faith in God. This was God's business. And God would be the means by which his promise to Abraham would be fulfilled. Because the business of salvation in the hearts of men is God's business. He sent his only begotten son to die for the world. Hallelujah, this is God's business, and God is able to take care of his business. Many people make the big mistake of believing that if they can build, build up their credit column to where they have worked hard enough, been good enough, and disciplined enough, and obedient enough, they can please God. Hallelujah, they believe they will tip the scale in their favor and God will take notice. And that is the reason why some people are not coming. They think they are too low down. They think they are not qualified to be among the people of God. But they want to put some things in place. They want to behave a particular way first. They want to build up their credit column that they can tip the scale and the favor of God will be upon them. But let me tell you, you need to repent first. You need to surrender to God first. Hallelujah. That is not the teaching of the scriptures. That belief, that system, that, that belief is not the teaching of the scriptures. The scripture teaches. All ye that labor and heavy laden, come unto me and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my burden is light. And my yoke is light and my burden is easy. God is able to fix all the problem you are fighting with. God concerned about your well-being. He's concerned about every aspect, every area of our lives. And he's well able and he's also available. All we have to do is believe and put our trust in him. Hallelujah. God is able. We can never push the scale in our favor. So don't try. Don't try. If, if, we, if we try to push the scale, the scale of trying to be good, trying to allow God to have favor with us, we cannot do that. That is not the way to go. That is not the teaching of the scripture. Trying to make, impress God. We cannot impress God. We have to surrender in humbly obedience, the spirit, hallelujah, of obedience and humility and self-denial that led Christ to the cross is what we must be gauging. Hallelujah. That same spirit that dwell in Christ, the, the scripture of Philippians 2, 5 said, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ. Hallelujah. That is what we must be seeking after, to have the spirit of humility. Self-denial and obedience in God. Hallelujah. That is what he's looking for. Not us trying to do a heap of good things and God will have favor with us. And now we will get on top of things and then okay, right, I'm in a position to serve God now. No, God is calling you just as you are. The very condition that you are in now, God wants to deal with you right there, right there. Right smack in the midst of your calamity and your battle and your confusion and your frustration and the mountains that stand in your way and the rock that you can't, you can't penetrate. God is calling you. He wants to deal with you right there and he's able. I'm telling you he's able. Abraham's situation, his situation was very difficult. It was unbelievable, but Abraham believed God and God come true for him. Hallelujah. He's an example. He's a learning and example for us to follow. Amen. You see, justification before God does not come out of our account. Hallelujah. Justification before God does not come out of our account where we have earned it, paid it, 
and received it. Justification is when God declares us just or declares us righteous. That is only happen when we come to God in, in repentance. Christ, through his death, has paid it for us. Paid the price and make the way, paved the way for us. Hallelujah. Christ through his death. So we don't have to do good or build up our account to be justified before God. Because we are already credited in full when we accept Christ. Hallelujah. At the moment of true repentance, when we accept Christ as Lord and Savior with a willingness to confess our sin and turn from it, the account of the Lord Jesus is credited to our account in full payment of our sin. Hallelujah. In full payment of our sin. When we come to the place or the point in our lives where we realize and accept the fact that, hey, I am an undone wretched sinner. I need deliverance. I need help. I must repent. I must turn from my wicked ways. Turn to the God of righteousness. Turn to Jesus Christ. Repent in, with, with a sorrowful heart. Truly repent to God. Hallelujah. In the person of Christ, Jesus said, recognize, you are, acknowledge that you are, I'm sorry for my sin, God. Forgive me. Help me. Then we are being justified. Hallelujah. We declared righteous where God is concerned. Our sin is completely removed. When we come to that place, we are no longer in debt and can never be called to account for it again. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 6, 23. We were supposed to pay that price. But thank God, the gift of God, eternal life through Jesus Christ, that price had been paid for us. So it's not something that we have to do to earn righteousness or to be justified by God. The only thing we need to do is to surrender our all, put our belief and our faith in God, and then we are declared righteous, not by good works. Hallelujah. Our sin is completely removed. We are no longer in debt and can never be called to account for it. That is what I said. Our, sir, our assurance of God does not lie in his actions. Our assurance of God does not lie, lie in his action, which we often do not understand. A lot of times we do not understand the actions of God. Hallelujah. So our, our assurance does not lie in that because if you cannot understand, when you don't understand, you will lose hope. But the message of the cross gives hope to the dying, sin sick soul. Hallelujah. It lies in his character. His character. Total trustworthy. Total faithful. Faithfulness. And total capable. He's totally capable. Hallelujah. That's the character of our Lord. He's totally faithful. As Christians, the scale are already tipped in our favor because of what God has done for us. So if you're a child of God, focus on obeying God. Focus on the spirit of self-denial. Focus on believing the word. Because the scale is already tipped. Christ has already credited us in full. And because we believe, because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, our account are already credited in full. So we don't need to go fighting to look to 
please God in, in tipping the scale. You know, of course there are things we must practice because God has commanded us to be holy for he is holy. But that does not, we are not doing that or practicing these things to gain righteousness or to be justified by God. We are doing the things of righteousness. We are doing good things because we are already justified. So you can come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Even if you are in a condition or in a position where you think you are not worthy, come just as you are and God will declare you just. He will declare you righteous. And then you now have the tools to work righteousness. You are not trying to work righteousness to please God. You are surrendering to God and then you have tools to work righteousness. I hope I make sense to you today. I just want to tell you this again. We are credited in full by the Lord Jesus Christ. So you don't have to go working hard to gain, to gain favor with God. God has already blessed you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. For your word, it's quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. We pray, God, that your word will take root in the hearts of the hearers today. And you just minister by your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Read your word. Read the entire chapter. Romans chapter 14. Read that chapter. Chapter 4, sorry. Romans chapter 4. Read the chapter. Take your time and read it. And you'll see the idea of, of Abraham believed God and God counted what he, his, his belief his faith in him as righteousness. Eh? God richly, richly bless you. Take care. I'm Pastor Dexter Bain. You are viewing the Living Hope Ministry. This program is designed to bring hope to the hopeless in Jesus' precious name. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ.